Um, but thank you guys for having me. I um, miss seeing your all's faces every week. And um, I have gone a different route than what we traditionally do. So instead of doing the floral arrangement live, because I do have construction going on out back um, and my cat loves to get in the middle of my floral arrangement stuff. So I have a video for you guys today that I did this morning at like two o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's got the demonstration in there and then I'll be on for a question and answer portion here in a little bit. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will play this lovely video that I made for you guys. So I wanted to welcome you all here today. We're gonna to do a fall floral arrangement. So one of the most important things about a fresh flower arrangement is using wet floral foam. And so we're gonna soak this foam here. And oftentimes people want to push it down in the water. We don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna slowly watch it sink. And then we are going to go ahead and let it sit in that water um, and soak up as much as possible while we get all of our other supplies and things prepped. So again, this is wet floral foam and we wanna make sure that we give it plenty of time to soak and we don't push it down. And once it starts to saturate, you can see that it will float in that water. Um, so just let it float there while you're getting everything else ready. So um, now that we have our floral foam soaking, I want to go ahead and get my flowers prepped and give that foam some time to soak. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the bundles open. These are just some that I got from the local grocery store. Um, usually I do like to either grow my own and cut from the garden or get from the local farmer's market. Uh, but it is getting a little cooler. We've already had a freeze here. Um, so that was a little bit impossible this time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all the easiest way that I know to open these bundles um, is actually going to cut this band off the bottom or pull it off if they're really rubbery. And then I usually just find the seam and tear them open. Easy as that. Um, so then what I do is I go ahead and cut the main long stem part back a little bit just to make them a little easier to manage and to kind of reduce my waste as I'm working in my space. Um, so I'll go ahead and cut these back and I'll get the rest of the flowers prepped. Um, I usually do also remove anything um, along the edge of the stem that's going to be leaves, foliage, um, anything like that. And so you're looking at this going into a glass of water or a vase to have beside you ready to use. So what I'm going to prep now is the replacement for our leather leaf that we're using in our arrangement today as our filler and it is going to be dried fall leaves. These have been um, dyed in their drying process and so that's why they have this vibrant color. The stems are a little bit thicker on these so you need some clippers to cut those and you want to cut them in smaller little segments so you have as much to use as possible for your arrangement because this is going to help us cover up that floral foam um, and then also going to add that bright pop of color um, along with your arrangement. So just make sure that you're cutting these if you use these um, with some clippers because the stems are a little bit harder to cut through and get your stuff organized and ready to go. What I want to talk about right now is actually getting your pumpkin to where you can use it as your container. Uh, so what I normally do is I cut some kind of a top either circular or you can cut in a star fun shape um, and go ahead and get the insides of the pumpkin removed. I do recommend using a solid metal spoon, pretty sturdy one, so when you're digging that stuff out uh, it's not going to bend or break on you. Uh, so we'll get that done and then we'll come back and get started with our arrangement. So now that you've got your flowers prepped and you've got your foam soaking uh, and you've got your lovely pumpkin gutted, we are going to pick what we want to put inside. Some people actually have containers that are cut right uh, for the inside of a pumpkin. Um, I don't have one of those, so we can either choose um, a plastic bag. This one's a little bit too big for what I would want. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is use some saran wrap um, and put down inside and this is just going to keep that water for, from coming out of the foam and onto maybe your table um, or decorative surface that it's on. Um, I do recommend maybe finding something to put under it just to kind of catch a little bit of that if it does happen to seep through. And be very careful when you are getting your pumpkin that you don't go all the way through the bottom because that can uh, create some issues there. So we're going to get this in and then we're going to go over to the sink. 
uh, where our foam is soaking and we're going to actually cut that foam and get it ready to place down inside of our pumpkin so that we can put our flower stems inside. So we're going to take the floral foam and put it right over top of your pumpkin and you'll have to cut down some of the edges just to get it to go down in there and I usually try to cut them at an angle to leave as much at the top as possible uh, for those stems to go in. And so we'll just get this guy cut down where he'll go in there and then we will cut off the top um, just leaving enough for a little bit of stems to come right above the pumpkin. So it's going to just slide right down in there now. You may just have to push it just a little or trim just a little more off um, to get that to go in there. And you want to make sure it's going all the way down the bottom because you want as much as possible uh, to put your stems in. So now that it's in there, you can kind of decide how much you want um, showing above. If you want a taller arrangement, you can leave uh, more of the foam. I like my arrangements fairly short, so I'm just going to cut right above the edge of the pumpkin lip. And then you can actually go ahead and put the rest of that foam piece back in your water and you can use it if you wanted to do a second arrangement later. Um, just let leave it floating and it'll keep collecting that water and it won't dry out. All right, now that we've got most of our supplies together, we've got our foam and our pumpkin, uh, we're ready to get started with our design. So one final cleanup that we wanna do is you actually wanna cut any of this extra off that you have uh, because it'll show in your final design. So we're gonna cut this off um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what I've got going on with my setup. I have all of my flowers are cut to the right size and they're sitting on the table in organized stacks. And then we also have the filler that I picked today is going to be um, dried fall leaves. Um, and these were actually dried in a professional setting and they were purchased. So you can actually use dried leaves from your yard. They just might dry out and get a little crusty um, on you a little faster, but these also had dye added when they were dried. So they're really vibrant orange. Um, so we're gonna just get started with that and we will create a base um, for our arrangement so we can get started with the beautiful flowers on top. All right, so when we're putting these stems in, you wanna be conscious of the angle. If you want everything to kind of stick up and kind of create a little collar, you can direct them a little bit angled down. If you want them to kind of cover up most of your green foam, you may wanna angle them up just a little bit. Um, and kind of create that cascading flow of leaves over the edge. So I'm going to angle mine up just slightly and it's really important to kind of spread out your leaves as you're going so you kind of cover up as much of that foam as possible. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a little collar around the edge um, and keep my stems going in and spreading the leaves out just to kind of create us a base. Um, this is what I'm using basically as the filler. You can also use um, a lot of green stuff out in your yard um, for this. And if you want to um, buy what the professionals use, most of the time for filler, they're using what is called leather leaf. It's a type of fern. Um, so that's something that is also usually available now at most of your grocery stores. They're starting to carry it because they've realized that people really like to do their own arrangements at home. Um, you can also get these leaves dyed in multiple colors. Um, so I picked the orange because I had a white pumpkin, um, but you can get them in red and all kinds of different colors. So. Um, just go ahead and get your collar created and then we'll move on to some of your base flowers. So now this is kind of what we've got. It looks a little wild and crazy. Um, you can tame it down if you want just by cutting some of the leaves that are thick in there out. I did put some um, sticking out the top just because you don't want only your filler to, to be at the bottom. You do want it to come through your arrangement just a little bit. So I did put some in the top. Um, and we may go back and add some later, but I don't want to get too much because too many stems in there will cause havoc and you'll be fighting yourself to get them in there. Um, so we're going to move on to what I like to call the body flower. So this is kind of going to fill up uh, most of your um, empty space and just kind of give you some nice color pop. Um, so I've already cut a few of these, but I'll show you all how I cut them. Um, so I like to get in here and look at my flowers and see kind of where they're sitting and pick a good spot and just go ahead and cut. I do cut these at an angle um, so that they can soak up as much water as possible. So you'll see that that's at an angle. And you may have to go ahead and pull off a few of the bottom ones. We'll keep those and put them in our pile and we may use those later. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get these guys inserted. And I like to do these on the four corners just to kind of give a good balance of your arrangement. So I'm gonna go in here at an angle and just do them on the four corners and just push in. If you're having issues getting your stems in, just make sure you brace your back hand and push into and, and kind of 
fight that resistance a little bit. You're gonna rotate and then do it again and just do it on the other corner here. And we'll go ahead and do the other two and we'll show you what that looks like. Now that we got those in, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an angle view here. So you see there's still a lot of that green foam that is showing. And our goal is to try to cover that up so that people can't tell that that's in there. Um, so we're just gonna keep adding stuff until we're pleased with how full it is. So we're gonna move right on to these little bundles here. Um, they're Ostermeria. It's one that is used oftentimes in the floral shops. So we've got two little bundles here and we'll just kind of pick um, and put those on each side. So again, we're gonna look at the base here and we're gonna cut the clusters right below and we're gonna cut those both at an angle um, just so they can soak up as much of that water again as possible. And go ahead and pull a couple of those leaves off to give you as much stem. You want at least an inch of that stem going in um, to the foam. And so I've actually got on this pumpkin, there's a little welcome sign. So I want to look and see where these can go um, and be opposite of each other and make sense with that welcome. So I'm probably gonna go on either side of it. And I'm gonna kind of put these in straight at a, um, not an angle, just kind of straight into the foam just to kind of create and fill this space here at the bottom. So we're just gonna go right in there and push them on in. And we'll do the other side. And there we go. And so this is what we've got. We're looking at that. And you'll see there's still some space in there and you're still seeing a lot of your foam. So we're just gonna keep going and keep adding stuff. Um, so I've actually filled um, or cut these down into smaller bits. So we're just gonna add them in and kind of stick with our pattern. I do like to work in threes or fives. So these are five. We're just gonna spread these around um, and kind of space them out. And All right, so we've got our little mini carnations in there. Um, we've got five in there. And then we're going to go back in there, and we've got some of these colored palms that kind of go with our little red here. So we're just going to add those in just to kind of switch up the color a little bit. I did cut these off in individual stems so we could place them a little more strategically to cover up some of that foam. So we're just going to go in and place them. And I like to get these usually pretty low in there by the foam, so they actually help cover up quite a bit. And so you're just going to kind of go in and find the empty spaces, um, see maybe where you're missing something and just put those in. I do like to use the ones that are maybe not as pretty or maybe they have little buds on them. Um, those are always good. They add a little bit of character um, and they're going to add a little bit um, of cover for your foam. So we're kind of doing this using all of our resources. Um, so I did purchase these flowers, so they are a bit expensive, and I like to use everything that I purchase. Um, so just kind of mix up the colors that you're grabbing as you go. So you kind of mix in the yellows and the little rust colors, um, just to kind of mix in all those fall beauties in there all at once. And then just keep rotating and adding, and hopefully we're going to be covering up some of that green foam for you. So just keep going. And just add more. I think there's one thing that I can always say is that I like to have more than less flowers. Um, there is a thing as too much, but I think it takes quite a bit to have too much. So we just keep adding until we're happy with it. And I will say um, that it is a whole lot harder um, if you put it in the wrong spot to take it out and replace it. You wanna go ahead and leave those in there. If you if you don't like where they're at, uh, just leave them in there and maybe move something else around it because the more holes that you have in your foam, the faster that it's going to draw out. Um, so that's something that you don't want to be poking and leaving a bunch of empty air holes um, in your foam because that's gonna draw it out for you pretty bad. And we just don't really want that. We want your foam to stay as wet as possible because that means your flowers will stay alive a whole lot longer. Um, so we're just going to keep adding these in and I will probably just keep adding until I run out because I really like adding these different colors in there. And so this one actually has two on it still. So I'm going to put that in the middle here to kind of give us a little bit of height there. And again, you just want about an inch of that stem going in and you may just need to fight and wiggle a little bit to get it to go around um, to get it to go in there. So it adds just a little bit of height for us. And now I'm going to go in with what I call uh, my filler. Um, so this just adds a little bit more color, a little bit texture. Um, so we're just adding a little bit of this. So this is um, goldenrod uh, that we've gotten. And this one is actually dyed. 
Um, so this one is red because it has been dyed. That's something that they've started to do in the floral industry that some people like and some people dislike. So if it's something you enjoy, uh, you go for it. If not, you can still get the traditional yellow. Um, so I've got a little bit of both that came with my bundle that I bought. And I'm probably going to use a little bit of both in this because this needs a little bit of that yellow, I think, in here. I think it would be really pretty. Um, so this is a big piece, and I don't really want that whole big thing anywhere. So I'm going to cut down some smaller pieces. Um, and I may even cut this middle here out just to use by itself um, to give a nice little pop kind of towards the center of our arrangement. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that again, kind of like we did the other flowers. We're just going to cut it at an angle, and I'm going to pull a couple of the guys off the end here just to kind of give us that stem to go in. And we're going to put this up here. Pick a spot that may be a little empty and just kind of put him in there. And then we're going to pick a couple of these other ones to go together to try to put in a little clump to kind of simulate what is going on on the other side. So we'll just cut off a couple of those, get them together in a little clump, and try to make it look similar to that. Let's pull all the stuff off the stems and put them down in there together. And so we've kind of got that going on on both sides a little bit there. Again, you're going to be starting to fight yourself a little bit when you get so many stems in the foam. And you can always arrange things and move things around if something's not where you want it. Just be really gentle with them because you could knock the blooms off. They are live flowers. Um, so there kind of spreads that out a little bit. And um, you can just move everything just a little bit how you want it. And take a look and see what you've got. And if you need to, again, go back in and add some of your other filler in there if you want some more orange or if you have other colors that you've purchased. Um, then also, this came with our little bundle, and it's going to add a little bit of height. Um, so this is something that kind of was a surprise for me to get. And so we're just going to add a couple pieces in here. Another thing that people oftentimes will use in these fall arrangements is the dried wheat. Um, so that's something that's usually fairly easy to get from a craft store or something like that. So we're just going to put a couple of these in there just to add a little bit of height again. And then we have one little sunflower that came in our bundle. Usually I like to, again, use things in threes and fives. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that there was only one in our little bouquet bundle. Uh, but we're going to use it and it's going to be wonderful. So I'm actually going to try to put him more in the center. Um, and maybe a little higher than everything else. So again, uh, we want to cut this at an angle when we get ready to cut it. But how tall do I want it? Usually I like my arrangements to be fairly short. So I usually do one and a half times the height of my container. In this case, the container is the pumpkin. Um, so what I normally try to do is I turn my flower upside down. And I go, where's that container? And then I go, oh, what's about half of that? Go up and that's where I'm going to do my cut. If you're kind of scared that that's too short, go ahead and cut it a little bit longer. You can always shorten it if you decide that it's uh, maybe a little bit too short for you so or too long for you. You can always go shorter. You can't add it back on after you cut it off. So if you're a little hesitant, cut it longer and then reduce it as you go. So that right here was where we were. And again, cut it at a bit of an angle. I don't like that angle very much, so I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Make sure it's a little bit more of an angle this time. And there we go. And then I'm going to kind of pick, again, where's my welcome at? Because I want that to be more of the front of this arrangement. Yes, it is a circular arrangement, um, so you could have it be the same all the way around. I could just put it right in the center, but I want mine to angle down just a little bit. So you may need to dig your way down in and find where is the best spot for that stem to go. And then just angle it in just a little bit. And these stems are fairly thick on some flowers, so it is something that you do have to like go ahead and push into that foam. Make sure you're giving a little bit of force. And there we go. And so this is what we've got for our arrangement. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more of these in to kind of balance that out on the other side over here. And then we'll look and see, do we need any more filler? Do we need any more of our fall leaf color or do we like how it is? So we'll come back in just a second and get a front view and we'll see so what now it looks like. I have everything put in. I've double checked. I've added a few pieces of goldenrod here and there. I've added in some more of that filler uh, leaf at the bottom just to kind of fill it out a little bit. So I'm going to show you kind of what we have here. 
And this could be a final product. This could be you being finished. Um, I'm one of those people that I always like to go over the top. Um, so something that I oftentimes like to do is actually take the top of the pumpkin and use one of the floral picks and actually go ahead and insert the floral pick into that lid and find somewhere in here that maybe you're missing something or that needs a little added touch and go ahead and add that back into my arrangement. Now, if this is something that you're wanting to leave out for several days, this piece may go bad a little bit faster because it's going to be getting all that air, um, so it may rot on you. So you may want to take it out eventually, but it's something that I like to add in there just for a little bit of flair. And especially whenever I do um, cuffies with jagged edges or something fun like that. So what I normally do is I kind of turn my arrangement and I find the spot that I think maybe is missing something or maybe I'm just not happy with what it is. And maybe I need to go ahead and take. So this one, I think he's he's really pretty, but this side over here to me seems a little bit empty. So I'm going to take him out, try to find that same hole he came out of and go ahead and insert the lid in there and then try to just move everything a little bit around him to kind of go there and then kind of find somewhere maybe to put him back in. Um, so I really like him. He's bright yellow. So we're just going to add him back in right So if there's something else that you could do with it, um, they do make these, uh, taper candle holders that you can put in. So if you want to leave the space, maybe in the center empty and you want to use these, um, you can get these at a lot of your craft stores, um, or you can order them online. I've found that sometimes that's a little bit cheaper. Um, also if you're using your floral picks, you can actually go ahead and put ribbon in. And so something that I like to do is just make some little ribbon tucks. Um, so this is some fall color ribbon that I'll probably go ahead and add into my arrangement today. And I got it, I think this was like a dollar. Um, so you can find a lot of different stuff, especially during the fall season. Um, and so I'll actually demonstrate for you how that I like to do that. Um, so for the ribbon tucks, I usually just cut kind of whatever I think I want the loop to look like. Um, and if I want to do multiples, I usually do them again in threes or fives. And so I'll go ahead and cut them all the same length. Then I use one of these picks with the wire already on it and I buy them that way in bulk. Um, and I'm just going to wrap that wire around that ribbon a few times. And if you're really picky, you can actually get some of the floral tape and go ahead and go over top of that. And it'll hold it on even better and it'll also hide that wire. I'm not somebody that is really that much into detail and that takes a lot of extra time. And it's another supply that you're spending money on. So once you've got that fixed, you can just kind of decide if you want them to be really tall, you can leave this fully uh, full length, or if you want to, you can just treat it like a stem and you can cut it off about whatever length that you want. So then again, you just put them in there and I like to use them to add just a little more height to the arrangement. So it kind of adds a little bit of pop there. So I'll probably go ahead and add about four more of those into my arrangement. So what I've done here is I've kind of placed those uh, ribbon tucks in about the approximity of where I want them to go. So I could kind of make sure that they were evenly spaced throughout the arrangement. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in and let you guys see what all decorating ideas. And then we'll be done for the day and move into the question and answer portion of the day. So that's kind of what those ribbon tucks in there look like. And I think they're just adding a nice little bit of texture in there, a little bit more color and kind of breaking up um, the bundles of those base flowers that we put in originally. Um, so this is our arrangement for the day and thank you guys for joining. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about some other options for decorating along with your lovely pumpkin arrangement. So a few other fall decorating tips that I have is the grocery stores and the supermarkets and all these big box stores they love to hit you with the fall decorations. So find them when they're on sale and that's something that you can use the following year. So this is something I think I paid a couple cents for when it was on sale last year or the year before. And I like to use it actually to go under my pumpkin arrangement. So it does catch that water like I said and it adds another layer. So we're just going to set that down inside of our little leaf guy here. And there we go. It just adds a little bit of color and also will help catch any water that may seep through that pumpkin. Another idea that I like to use in my house every year is to use seeds from the harvest season as part of your decoration. So this is a good example of this here. And so this vase is actually got black beans, corn, brown beans, white beans, and then it just kind of repeats the pattern. Um, so the trick to this is finding some containers that are similar in shape, um, but maybe just one is slightly smaller than the other. Um, so if you look at the top of this, you'll see that the vase inside has a similar shape 
to the one on the outside, but it's just probably about an inch smaller. Um, so this is something you just put them in there before you add in the seeds and then you arrange your seeds kind of how you want. Um, this is something that could be dumped out. I like to try to keep it intact because it's really challenging to do every year, but it does make it difficult to get the water out if you have flowers or something in there. So if you're doing this, you may consider using some dried flowers to put in there that you can leave from year to year. Um, and again, I know that a lot of people like to use the dried wheat. Um, that would also be something that would be nice in this arrangement to add a little bit more height and some color. Um, so just make sure you're utilizing all of the things around you. And another thing that people oftentimes miss out on is getting that corn. And this has the different colors and different textures. And you can just lay it along the side of a table or an arrangement and just kind of adds a little bit to it. Everybody always thinks pumpkins and gourds. And sometimes we forget that we have this lovely Indian corn, um, I think is traditionally where we see that. Um, and this, there's many different colors of it. So I've got a few examples here. Um, so you can definitely get that. And then that is something that I found last year is that we actually had some little miniature ears of corn and I use those um, to actually decorate inside of a wine glass and I turned the wine glass upside down and actually used, I think it was this tray. Um, so I put the wine glass with the corn inside of it upside down and I put a candle on top. Um, so just look at different things and just try to be creative with it and enjoy the fall season. Um, you can also use baskets for your arrangements if that's something that you collect or have a lot of. Um, we've done basically this same arrangement in baskets before and one of the keys to that is trying to find a liner for it or having a container that you can do the arrangement in and then just set down into your basket. So again, you're having something that catches that water. Baskets are pretty easy to find liners for though because they are oftentimes used for plants and planters. So I hope that you found some of this interesting today and I hope that you guys will um, maybe share some of your ideas in either the chat box um, or in the comment section or if we do the question and answer portion. Well, thank you all so very much for tuning in and watching my recorded video. Um, I'm available now if you all have any comments or questions that have come in. I think a few came in in the chat box. I was trying to look at it, but I couldn't see it um, 100%. So um, thank you guys. And again, I apologize for some of the sound issues in the video. Joel was just learning. That was his first um, videographer uh, experience. So we're going to work on that in the future and hopefully we get um, some, some better quality video and maybe we won't do it at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs>